Hey guys, I am um, excited to be live with you. Um, I know I have just been anticipating an amazing teaching with you all. And um, the Lord really put it on my heart to begin uh, going deeper into the glory realm and what it requires for us to go there, what it requires for us to enter into those deeper places and spaces with God. Um, so I am uh, anticipating diving into that. I know before we got into this live stream and this broadcast, uh, it was um, powerful and weighty and I just didn't want to put the pen down. I really could write about this forever. Uh, this is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, this is one of my, uh, you know, treasures of my heart is the, the glory realm, the glory of God. I'm a glory carrier. I love to uh, be in the deeper things of God all the time. Uh, I just, I love it. So um, I'm really uh, anticipating diving into it. If you guys want, you guys go ahead and grab a, note, a notepad and a pen. You guys might want to write some of this down. I have a lot of scripture uh, references to back up what I'm saying. Uh, so I will be reading a lot of scripture. Uh, bear with me. My voice has been um, strained because uh, I'm an intercessor uh, at my um, church. Uh, and intercession got really crazy. I don't know if you all saw uh, that watch party uh, that I posted today. Um, but the Lord just broke out with this radical roar and intensity uh, with me last night. Um, and it just blew up. So my, my voice is, is repairing uh, from what was unleashed and unlocked yesterday. So I will be taking drinks of water and we are about to dive in. Amen. So uh, go ahead and get your notepad and your pen. You guys are going to want to write some of these things down uh, because it's a lot. It's a lot of scripture. Okay. Uh, I will be reading from my notes. Go ahead, tag, share, like the broadcast. And we're just going to go ahead and get started in a moment. I will praise in. Father, we thank you for the glory. Father, we just thank you for what you're releasing tonight. And we cannot even begin to explain the tangible excitement of your infinite vastness of the deeper things of you, the deeper places of you, and what it requires for us to go there. And we thank you for, you know, the, the striking of the match on the altars of our hearts tonight. We thank you for the repentance and the conviction that will go forth to uh, eradicate greater hunger and greater thirst. We just thank you, God, that you are coming in and you're riding in and you are putting the pedal to the metal and you are causing us to um, grab hold of the reins of the greater things of you. Uh, and what we were destined for, what we were born for, what we have an inheritance in, and what was always ours. So God, we just thank you right now for just going forth and doing what you want to do, saying what you want to say, and um, amen. I'm going to change this real, real quick. Get us on a more deeper uh, thing. So, three right off the bat treasures and crucial pinpoints for entering glory habitation. Um, and we know that if you all saw my recent broad, my, my recent post, um, that there is a cost, that there's a cost to the glory, okay? So your three things that you need to know about entering the, 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 the glory and being in the glory habitation is discipline sacrifice and death okay you you cannot get away from these three things um to experience the deep realms of glory okay it's discipline sacrifice and death the dimensions of god are entered in through the press and the suffering of bypassing the soul realm the unrenewed mind the earth realm the second heaven. Okay, so you need to understand getting through to the glory realm, you as a believer will have to get and press through seasons of your unrenewed mind, which is parts of your mind that have not been renewed yet, parts of your soul that have not been delivered yet, parts of the earth realm that you have still not leveled up in. 
and parts of the second heaven demonic realm that will try to siege you and stop you from entering in and breaking through that layer in the realm of the spirit. Okay, so we're going to lay that groundwork right now. The dimensions of God are entered in through the press and the suffering that you will bear through the passing of the soul realm. You will have to pass through it. You can't go around it. You will have to pass through and overcome the fullness of your soul realm. The unrenewed mind, meaning the parts of you that are not healed, the parts of you that are not renewed yet, the earth realm and the, and the demonic realm that will try to seed you from getting there. Okay? You will have to press through that, that, that dimension to get through to the glory dimension. Sorry I just burped. Somebody's getting delivered tonight. Every time I burp, you guys know me. Uh, that means deliverance is going forth. So you enter in through the incubation of sanctification. Write that down. You enter in through the incubation of sanctification. Yeah, this is not going to be one of like the funnest teachings. It is If you want to grow, if you want to mature, if you want to be circumcised and, you know, your flesh cut a little bit, stay tuned. Uh, because... Otherwise, you will just stay a lukewarm Christian. Otherwise, you will just stay on the pews on Sundays and you won't go any further. So, if you want more than that, stay tuned. Okay? Stay tuned. Um, so, I already know some, some people are already, stuff's flying off. I can feel it. So, you have to, you, when you enter in through the glory, through the incubation of sanctification. You are going to go through the sanctification process in order to reach the high dimensions of glory and power. Okay, because in the glory is the fire and the power. The glory is not just a layer of the presence. That's what we need to understand. His presence is in the glory, but his glory is not just his presence. Inside of the glory is the power, the fire, and who he is. Okay, so you are entering in a powerful dimension when you inhabit the glory of God. When you become a glory carrier, you are one that is filled and subdued and entertaining the intensity of his presence, his all omnipotent, omnipotent, okay, and his glory and his fire, his power. So the glory of God is going to be all of those dimensions, all of those facets of him within the entirety of his holiness, his reverence. The glory of God ushers in the holy of holies, which means that the holy of holies is the inner court. So in order to go beyond the veil, that is going to require a mass sanctification. It is going to require the 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 mega press and in order to get into the inner courts you are going to have to bypass what i just said in the beginning of this broadcast the dimensions of your soul realm the dimensions of your unrenewed mind and the di dimensions of the demonic second heaven realm that will try to seed you and stop you from fully going in there whether that be through distraction whether that be from warfare, whether that be from, you know, tactics or whatever. It is going to require a suffering on your part because it was because it's going to require a intense sacrifice and intense discipline. That is where the suffering comes in from. It is going to require a full like bankruptcy of your life in order to enter in to the holy of holies and the glory realm of God. And this dimension of the glory comes through a pressing. It doesn't fall on you. It's not an anointing. Okay? It's not a mantle. Okay? And some are born and mantled as glory carriers, but there is a process to reach that type of mantle anyways. But the glory in itself is going to require a sacrifice. The glory in itself 
is going to require a pressing, a massive pressing in, a massive sacrifice and self-discipline of showing up. The wine press of suffering creates the glory. Okay, it's not just the oil press of where you would get an, empow a, an empowered anointing. The wine press which was the anguish, it was the anguish that you, that you go through, it was the anguish that Jesus sat through in the Garden of Gethsemane that subdued him with the strength and the power and the glory and the shift of his whole life that ushered him into his purpose and his destiny. Okay, but suffering creates the glory. How do we know this? Romans 8, 18 through 31 my God, I forgot my Bible. Give me one moment. I have to grab my Bible. I hate getting up, but I have to read these verses to you. So excuse me. Okay, I, I don't like being that person, but you know, I was that person just now. Okay, so Romans 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fealty, not willingly, but because of him who was subject to it in hope. That the creation itself also would be set free from its slavery. Tell me how we're first talking in the first verse of 18 to consider the sufferings of the present time because it cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed and how it drastically shifts to the unction of creation and the slavery of its corruption into the freedom of the glory of the, chil of the children of God. So it talks about a deliverance from the slavery of corruption, the deliverance, bypassing the deliverance of the soul into salvation to be set free from these things. For the redemption of our whole body, because all of creation is groaning for the adoption of sons and daughters. So do you see that glory and suffering marry one another? Glory and suffering are together. And the suffering is you breaking through to your full salvation. It is breaking through to your full deliverance. It is breaking through. That's what the press it is. It is pressing through from glory to glory and faith to faith. It is pressing through the realm of your unrenewed mind and, your, and, and, and the parts of your soul that are still reaching its glory to glory. Okay? So we know that in this verse it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth worthy to be compared to the glory that's about to be revealed in me. So I have to suffer for the glory of God to be revealed in me. That the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery and corruption into the freedom of the glory. Okay, so you cannot bypass the process to enter into the supernatural realm of glory. It's actually a promise. It's not something that is just for the elite. It's not something just for the preacher. It's not something just for the pastor. It's not something just for the leaders that you see that are global and international. It's not just for the prophet and the apostle. It is to be, to, it is to be revealed in all of us. It is to be revealed in every single child of God, son, daughter, every person that has said yes to Jesus Christ receives the glory of God. But you have to go through this press. You have to go and reach through this suffering that breaks you, that breaks through your all of your carnality to reach the dimension of your spirit man. Because that's what it's trying to reach. It is the undoing and the unraveling of every carnal place of you because you were in this world, but not of it, but you are still in this world. So we are working that out 
We are working out that process so that the realm of glory will be revealed in and through us and we can begin to break through and inhabit the, di the different greater dimensions of God. But in order to do that, there is a price. There is a cost. There is a diligence. There is a discipline. There is a sacrifice and a death that you will experience, that you will experience if you want to carry the glory, if you want to inhabit the glory. There, there is no other road, no other lane, no other lane. This is the only way, the only way. My God, I feel the fire of the Lord. The suffering of pushing past the conditions of life's turmoil and facing them head on produces the dominance of life in the spirit. Because you're pushing past all the debris that wants to keep you out. You are pushing past all the debris of all natural life and the enemy that wants to keep you out of your divine right, which is the supernatural, which is the realm outside of our earthly plane which is the dimension outside of this tangible earthly realm. God created every single person, his sons and his daughters, even, even it's like he, he created all of us to inhabit this realm, this supernatural realm. Why do you think 16 year olds and 15 year olds that are not saved are hungering for the supernatural and the paranormal and your new agers are searching and looking because they are searching and looking for something that is already intricately woven on the inside of them, hungering, hungering and yearning for that void to be filled. That void, yes, is the love of God, but it is also the supernatural. It is the supernatural multifaceted capacity of a creator not yet fully known and, 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 and yet un unveiled at the same time, awaiting for us to behold his face, awaiting for us to behold his face. All of creation is, is waiting to behold the face of God, the reflection of God. I will never forget a radical encounter that I had with the Lord. I actually shared it in a few other of my broadcasts, but I was in the middle of a fast, go figure, no surprise. And I was on my, my 11th or 12th day of a liquid fast. And I was in the middle of worship and I was just crying out in utter desperation because I was just wanting to see his face. I wanted to see the face of God. I, 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 was, I, I had enough of his presence. I wanted him to, to behold and touch my face. I wanted to be mouth to mouth with God, face to face with God. I wanted his face. And all of a sudden, uh, him as the lion came in front of my face and he grabbed me. He grabbed me with his hand, but his face was the lion. And as I looked into him, I saw a reflection of myself. I saw him. I can't even begin to describe it. I looked at his face, the face of the lion. And in his face, all my identity was known. In his face, all of my insides was known that it's like my my fullest identity like exploded completely exploded when i saw the face of this lion everything in me gasped i couldn't even contain myself i wailed and i lost my mind because that was a level of identity I haven't even known. It was beyond scripture. It was beyond what the word tells me. It, it, was, it was beyond the presence. It was beyond fathering. It was beyond adoption. It was the face of the lion was who I was. He was who I was, who I am. He was who I am. I wasn't anything separate. I wasn't anything else. His face was my inside. Does that make sense to you? So it's, wow, that glory encounter was dynamic. You, you, you have to press for those types of encounters. It, you know, they don't fall on you. It comes with the cost to see God that way. It comes with the price to, 
to be that desperate to enter into those realms and see him in that way and have him touch you in that way. 1 Peter 5.10 And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you make you strong firm and steadfast let's read that verse slower and the god of all grace called you to his eternal glory after you have suffered a little while he will restore you to this glory make you strong in this eternal glory, make you firm and steadfast in this eternal glory because of his grace. God of all grace who called you to the eternal glory. After you have suffered a little while, will you experience the full restoration Glory is not without suffering. I will say that a million times. Suffering is a promise to experience the higher mysteries and secrets of the Holy of Holies. Because he knows that you are trustworthy to see him in that way and not boast about your encounters. And in the glory is the encounters. In the glory are the secret things of God, the deeper things of God. But he will know because you went through that pressing tunnel, that consecration, that incubation of consecration to get to him in that way, to get to him in that depth, that you won't use the revelation you receive to boast. You will not use that revelation that you collected, that you've seen, that you obtained. Not even obtained, because you don't even obtain it. But that you've encountered to write a book. I mean, we do write books for people to, you know, get wisdom. But not, but not to do these things. Not to reach out to a population and a congregation about your encounters. But that you have been matured through the process of entering into the glory dimension. Because that's what it does. To get there requires you being seasoned. Requires you being matured. Requires you being pressed, refined, and ironed. To reach his face and behold it. That's what the suffering is. It's the process to get to his eternal glory. You can not go around. Your press shows him your devotion and your devotion will stand the test of the purification. What do you think Ezekiel did? He couldn't even stand before the face of God. Enoch, they could not even stand before the consuming fire. They could not bear that weight. You will not bear the weight of the glory if you do not go through the sacrifice. If you do not go through the death process. If you do not go through that self-discipline to keep pressing until you reach him. You will not even be able to hold the weight of what you will encounter unless you go through that tunnel of purification. Because he is the consuming fire that you will meet on the other side. He is. You will see him in the fullness, in the weighty fullness of the Holy God. 2 Corinthians 4.17. You guys can write that scripture down. For our light and momentary troubles 
are achieving for us an eternal glory. I can give you 50 million scriptures on suffering and glory. We don't have enough of time tonight, but I've already given you five to six. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us the glory. Says it right there. This is scripture. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Your troubles are refining the glory that is coming. It's refining the glory of God within you. It's refining the dimension that you can reach into. But so many plummet and quit because they're facing their own demons, their own unrenewed mind, their own soul realm, their own selfishness, their own sin, their own bitterness, their own unforgiveness, their own pride, their own wanting to hold on to their life still. So they stay in the confinement of their prison because they don't allow themselves to walk through the incubative process to reach the eternal glory that promises to restore. So we have a lot of unsaved believers wanting to stay lukewarm and happy with their lukewarm life, one toe in the world, one toe in Christianity, and somehow they're wondering why they are not free and experiencing the fullness of revelation, and yet they're going from prophet to prophet to prophet's revelation and feeding on that when they can be obtaining their own prophetic gifting, prophetic anointing, if they would just. Go through the process and choose no lukewarm, hot or cold. That's all. That's our option. There's no other option. It is black or it's white. Jesus said it himself. So we can have a whole lot of supernatural believers walking the earth right now being supernatural throne rooms to humanity Literally being walking glory dimensions among prodigals and sinners, drug addicts and prostitutes. But instead, we have bound up Christians walking among them trying to preach the gospel and no one's getting saved. If we would just choose the entirety of the word of Jesus Christ, we would all be in the manifestation of radical signs and wonders and supernatural dimensions. Think about that. Think about that. Because he promises the glory, but he promises the suffering first. And no one wants to go there. No one wants to go there. No one. And when it gets too hot, and when it gets too long in the heat, forget it. Forget it. And they walk the other way of that tightrope, and they go back. You've already went this far. You've already spent three years in the valley, two years in the wilderness, and then... You know, all of it in the refiner's fire. Because, yeah, sometimes you get all of it. And then when you get out of the fire, you walk into a desert. And then so many quit, angry and bitter. Honey, is part of the process. If you would just keep going, you'll enter the eternal glory. It doesn't say, I'm. you can do this suffering in five months and then enter the eternal glory. I mean, 10 years, 20 years 40 years these people went through it before they reached it. And we're crying over five. Hello. Ask somebody that knows. I don't teach anything that I do not know that I do not have experience in, that I did not have my own training in. And some of it, I'm still in. Waiting. 
We all have our fires. Because if we are devoted believers of God, we never truly leave the fire. Because in order to be close to his heart, we will always be in the flame. Always. Always. At his feet, you were in the flame. Lovers of God are in his eternal flame. Better get comfortable in it. Find a pillow. Pull up a blanket. And learn to marinate in it. Instead of your flesh screaming, focus on the depth of the flame. Focus on the intimacy of the flame. Focus on the wisdom of the flame. Focus on the understanding of that flame. Focus on the weeping in that flame, the connection in that flame. But so many people focus on the screaming and the agony of the flame. When we can just sit and learn to find home in the flame because ultimately, like, it's amazing when you do. It's amazing when you do. And you don't ever want to leave the fire. And that's how you truly see someone walking in the power of God. And the fire of God comes upon their life when they're ministering. Because they don't run from the fire. They sit in it and they nuzzle up in it. And they, they find a connection to it. And... Yeah, you get me. I have too much makeup on to get emotional. So we're not, I'm not gonna get emotional. Jesus, thank you for that glory. Your girl knows the fire. James 1.12 Blessed is the one who perseveres under the trial by fire. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown. That person will receive the crown of life. When you get to overcoming the harshness of the fire and you learn what you need to learn in it, you pass, you stood. There comes the crown, there comes the glory, there comes the power. There comes the recompense. There comes the reward. And everything that you went through for your God. All of it. All of it. All of that suffering. It was laying down the groundwork for what you will step onto when you get out. It's for your good. It's for your good. Which leads me into discipline. Discipline. Write that down if you haven't already. It's part of your key nuggets. Titus 1.8. Uphold self-control and discipline. I won't read it all. But it you must uphold self-control and discipline. You will need it. You will need it in the hours when your mind and your emotions are contrary to your truths, pressing into those deeper realms. Because everything will war against you reaching that realm. And you will need to press through the familiar spirits of your past. You will need to have the self-discipline and the self-control to press through the false identity 
of the war that's coming at your identity, your mind, your emotions, and whether you're encountering the Lord in that place or not, your self-control and your discipline is crucial in reaching the dimension. Because I'm telling you right now, even when you're pressing and you're pressing and you're pressing and you're pressing and you don't see any fruit of his presence, you don't see any fruit of the deeper dimensions, all you feel are the demons around you while you're pressing, you're going to need to have focus. You're going to need to have a press. You're going to need to be self-disciplined to steward, say no, 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 no. Holy, holy, holy. Go lower. Holy, holy, holy. You're beautiful, you're beautiful. Your feet are worthy. And you touch his feet, his bronze feet. In Revelations. And you kiss him, you kiss his feet. And you go lower and lower and lower. And you get out of this. 190 dimension that's around your seer realm you've got to laser sharp laser sharp focus and pressing through these greater dimensions and you gotta stir up your worship you gotta stir up your adoration and your exaltation and then sometimes it's just this honing crazy stillness where you won't move, you won't buckle, you won't shift, you won't teeter-tatter the line, you're there. You're there. Self-discipline, self-control. You will have things contrary. You will have things contrary coming at you. It's called resistance. 2 Corinthians 7-11. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you what eagerness to clear yourselves what indignation alarm what longing what concern what readiness to see justice done at every point you have proved yourselves to be innocent in a matter see what this godly sorrow has produced in you it's the brokenness of your soul that produced your eagerness your clarity your indignation your alarm your alertness your longing your concern to be concerned for after the things that concern God the heart of the father to prove yourself in this innocence of wanting and searching and seeking after these things of God. You're going to face the sorrow of your soul realm. But it says in 2 Corinthians 7 11, what does it produce in you? <laughs> if you keep going, if you keep going, indignation, alarm, eagerness, longing, readiness. Justice to see it at every point proved yourself to be innocent. Self discipline through the process. Next is your sacrifice. Sacrifice will be your number one companion for pressing in through the glory realm. The sacrifice will be. Your life as a normal Christian. Let me say that again. I don't think the people in the back heard me. The sacrifice will be your normal Christian life. The sacrifice will be life as a normal Christian. The casual believer that has devotion time, Bible reading, worship, and a few face times. Sacrifice. 
will be your life as a normal Christian. I don't think they heard me either, Esther. Your sacrifice would have to be to leave what you see as normal to go into such a place that 90% of Christians haven't even gone your whole life. Your TV schedule, your friends, your career, your home, your choices. You won't have any. <laughs> you won't have any. Not as a dead woman. Not as a dead man. You won't have any. You will wake up with this life with one question burning in you. Where do you want to go and how do you want to use me today? How can I live for you? That's the heart of someone that died back there. A burning one that gave up normal Christianity for the written letter and the written vow, the written letter and the written vow that you really are to make as a son and as a daughter. That says, don't even say goodbye to your mother and father. Just come with me now. Don't even say your condolences to the things you love. Don't even say your condolences or your farewells to the things that you're even going to miss. You can't even miss them. You can't even touch them. You can't even look back there and say, oh my gosh. I have to, I want that. I want to go back there. I want to go say, pardon, farewell. Let me just go and touch it one more time. You better forget it. You better forget that life. Because the sacrifice will be not what you see in global media streams, at the pulpits, A real believer. I'm not saying that they're not because I don't know their walk. But what I'm saying is by their fruit, I still see a lot of ego, which tells me you didn't give up your life before you got up there. That's what it tells me. Sacrifice is the weeks and the months and even years of devoted prayer, fasting, and pushing and breaking barriers and walls of your thirst and your hunger within you. Ho oh, ho! Let me say that one more time. Sacrifice is the weeks, the months, and sometimes years that you give yourself to in prayer and fasting to push through your own barriers of your hunger and your thirst. Where you tell and you feel yourself in you saying, I ain't hungry enough. I ain't thirsting enough for my God. I got to get these walls down. I got to hunger and thirst deeper. I feel the deep calling out unto deep, but there's a barrier on the inside of me that's not allowing me to thrust forward into this. I got to break this limitation within my own spiritual capacity.
is sounding out the wells within you. Those deep, deep ancient wells and ancient doors to let the king of glory come in. To allow your spirit to hunger and thirst for him in even greater capacities. That's pursuit. That is pursuit. Not striving, not religious rhetoric, pursuit. Heart to heart, spirit to spirit pursuit. Those 5 a.m.s that you set your alarm because you just want to meet him. Those 5 a.m. mornings of where when you're not a normal per person, but you're going to self-discipline yourself to wake up, put that pot of coffee on, turn the TV off, put your little reading lamp on, sit in his presence. Say, here I am. Whatever you want to do, I'm not going to strive in reading the word. I'm going to sit here and give myself to you. However you want to pursue me, God, I'm here pursuing you. Whatever it takes to pursue the breakthrough. Whatever it takes to pursue the breakthrough and greater intimacy, greater consecration will thrust you into the realm of glory. So, moral of all of this, Sacrifice is giving up your whole life. Yes, Micah. For all of Jesus and all he has. And all he says. And all he wants. That's what love does. Endures all things. Bears all things. Hopes in all things. And when you love someone will do crazy things like give up your life. Right? And in exchange, he gives you his mysteries, his secrets. And his glory. That's the death your life in exchange for his as he commands to follow him as you take nothing with you. Nothing. Not even you. Not even yourself. I don't know why this was so emotional. But in a nutshell, glory, habitation, discipline, sacrifice, death. And all of these things will be added to you. Amen. How are you guys feeling? Are you guys with me after that? It was such a great, such a great dynamic. Um, yeah, I'm going to... Um, Let's see, I'm going to put this up real quick for you all. Let's see, you guys, hold on one second. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Let's see. up and pinned my website if you guys would like to sew 
into this message and into this soil and into this ground for breakthrough um, in this area of your life as a seed of sowing into faith that this will be your portion. I'll put that up there. You guys can do that. You guys can sow. Um, the options are all the way at the bottom uh, on the donate option. You guys can give there. Um, but I just wanted to make that available to you. I'm a huge sower in teachings and uh, prophetic words. Um, and the basis of that is, is because it's a trading floor. So what you trade into, you get the supply. So you're trading, you're trading. You are trading a seed for its manifestation of believing that it's going to explode in your own life and it's going to reap in your own life and you are taking that by faith and you are tangibly um, saying, I want that revelation, I want that comprehension, I want that that place, that secret place, I, I want what these scriptures say. So that's available to you up there. If you guys want to do that like I said these are this is a group of free teachings um, we've been doing this solid for a year um, so if you guys feel led to bless amen I'll be grateful um, but otherwise powerful powerful teaching I will make sure to post this up on my YouTube channel so it will be accessible to you at all times um, so you will have that access to go back to it um, when you want and of course it will be in the hub still but you will still have your full uh, access uh, to my YouTube channel that link if you have not subscribed to it yet go on to my personal profile page and that link is right underneath my profile picture you will see the YouTube link just click that link it's there that link is just already set up for you and it will bring you straight to my YouTube channel make sure you uh, subscribe and hit the bell uh, because when you hit the bell, you know and you see when new teachings uh, or new prophetic words are um, uploaded. So make sure that you tap the bell and tap subscribe. Other than that, you guys be encouraged, be incredibly, incredibly blessed. We have the teachers lineup uh, coming up this week, I believe, Monday uh, and on. We have our three, our three teachers that are finishing up our teachers uh, lineup. So. Uh, you guys don't want to miss that either. And then we will start on September. Crazy, crazy. We're in September already. But we will be in the month of September. And we will have those lineups up and available um, for next month too. So, uh, blessings. And I am hoping to have our uh, next hub gathering event out here in the city of New Orleans. Our equip gathering and send out in the streets. Um, hopefully by the end of September. Um... That's what I'm feeling, like September 29th. I don't even know if that's a weekend or not. The end of September, maybe beginning of November. We'll see. Uh, but I'm hoping the end of September. Uh, so I will have all of that uh, info out, the flyers coming out with the travel uh, information and the lodging places that you all can stay. Our first gathering was incredible. It was powerful. We were stuck to the floor in an angelic visitation uh, at the very end. People were singing angelically, um, and we really could not even hardly leave. It was it was insane the power that went forth, uh, and at the altar, um, so many got hit with the fire of the Lord, uh, and it was just mind blowing. So you don't want to miss our next gathering. Make sure that you come because uh, they're really equipping. And then we get sent out, I send, I send us all out for evangelism in the city. And we evangel, evangelize in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Um, and we release dance and minister and lay hands. So powerful, powerful time. Hope to see you there. I will uh, put all the details out soon. God bless you.